I'm head of sustainability for the America's Cup Event Authority. So my job is really to embed sustainability into everybody's roles, into this whole event, which is pretty complex if you think about it. Um, any major sporting event has a lot going on. You have a lot of partners or sponsors and vendors and temporary construction and power and food and transportation. And so looking at each one of these areas and figuring out how can we be a little more sustainable. And in general, that's a really big word, sustainability. A lot of people don't like it. It, it just, it is what it is. But for us, it really means minimizing any potentially negative impacts of this event here in San Francisco, whether it's on land or in the water, and then maximizing all possible legacy benefits for the city of San Francisco and the Bay. So for example, um, one of the biggest impacts of a sporting event, a major sporting event, is transportation and energy, which cause emissions because many times we rely on fossil fuels to move ourselves around. So when we think about powering this event, um, you know, the TV screens, the broadcasters, the lights, and so forth, uh, the facilities, the temporary facilities, we have to think about how we're going to get the power. Here at America's Cup Park, where we're sitting now, it's a huge pier. We're right out on the water. We're very fortunate that there's power on this pier and that it comes from local San Francisco Public, Public Utility Commission hydropower. So everything that we have is plugged into this pier and there are no generators running. That is massive for a sporting event. Now out at America's Cup Village, which is out at Marina Green on the northern waterfront um, of San Francisco, there is no power. There's no power on that venue. So you have to think about, well, what are we going to do? Um, we've been able to learn from past events here at Marina Green that we can reduce the number of generators that we need. Typically, events oversize the generators because people don't want to run out of power. We have gotten very good at reducing the number of generators. We only have two for the entire site out at Marina Green. Two generators and they're running a biodiesel blend of B20 fuel. So that reduces local air emissions. So that's a little bit about power. Another major impact of sporting events is transporting people, all the spectators that come. A really big impact. You know, they're coming from across the Bay or the South Bay or even internationally. So we have a big effort in partnership with the city to educate people about taking public transportation, about walking and about biking, providing special maps, a special online journey planner tool just on how to get to the America's Cup on transit or biking or walking. In partnership with the San Francisco Bike Coalition, we have bike valet parking at both the America's Cup Village and the America's Cup Park to really make it easy for people. A brand new bike lane went, went in up and down the Embarcadero, bright green, everyone loves it. Um, it really demarks where the bikes can go and it makes it safer for them and safer for the, for the car traffic as well. So making things easy for people so they understand I can actually get to this venue easily and without burning fossil fuels. So I mentioned that in the host city agreement with San Francisco, um, it says we will be carbon neutral and zero waste. And I'm really happy um, about our partnership with a company called Offsetters. And they are coming on board for the first time with the America's Cup as an official carbon credit supplier. They were also the first Olympic game sponsor around this carbon idea. Um, that we have to take a look at the emissions from sporting events and compensate for them. So this is a great partnership with Offsetters to make the America's Cup a carbon neutral event. And the way you kind of look at carbon management for an event is you estimate what the carbon footprint will be. You look at how, many, how much energy you think you're going to use, all the materials you'll use, the food, the waste, etc., etc. There's a long list of things you try and estimate. Then you reduce that estimated footprint as far as you can. So for example, I mentioned um, that this pier is powered by hydropower. That's a, a huge reduction measure. Um, using an all hybrid vehicle fleet from Lexus, who are a sustainability partner of the America's Cup. That's an absolute reduction measure. Only electric golf carts around the site, biodiesel in our generators. These are all things that reduce. And then you're left over with some amount of carbon because at this point you, we don't have the technology 
um, in all these different areas to have a completely carbon neutral event. Um, so you have to compensate for that. You know, we have helicopters that are providing amazing footage of the races. Well, there's no solar powered helicopter yet. So you're going to have a residual amount of carbon that your event has. And then what do you do about it? You can um, do some local legacy projects in London. They actually, one of the projects was to retrofit some local housing around the Olympic Park where you can actually measure the reductions and you can have an impact. Um, but our program through Offset is we're acquiring carbon credits. Now you could just go out and get any carbon credits, which is not a bad thing. Carbon's carbon, removing it from the atmosphere is great. But we wanted something associated with sailing. Um, at the moment, there are no carbon projects, carbon reduction projects in the water yet. There probably will be in the near future. So we decided to um, look at a project that is a forestry-based project next to the water. Because if you clear cut a forest that's right next to the water, it will silt in the rain, it will destroy the marine habitat and all the life that lives there. So if you keep the forest, the trees standing and they're managed properly, um, there are international protocols around re, um, measuring the carbon that you've saved instead of cutting it down. So that's what we're doing. Um, and it's, there's a video on our website about this. And this is a, a beautiful uh, marine habitat and forested habitat up in British Columbia in Canada. And it's the home of salmon and whales and local wildlife and the First Nations up in Canada. So it's a really nice link with sailing. So. The America's Cup is really proud of a partnership with Sailors for the Sea um, as our official Clean Regattas partner. And very early on, over two years ago before any of our events took place, any of our World Series events around the world took place, we, um, we had this partnership and we committed to um, every event being a Clean Regatta. And the Clean Regattas program is a checklist of best practices and you earn points for achieving the best practices. Um, and we've worked closely with the staff over the last two years um, to, to really enhance the Clean Regattas program um, so that it's really applicable to a major regatta, the America's Cup. Um, they've instituted a, a review board and so I'm collecting data that will be submitted to the review board and we'll have a final certification announced. So we're really proud of that partnership and thank Sailors for the Sea.